authentic as fuck. Hey, Yelena. Hello, everybody. So last week, we talked about uh, a little bit about therapy and psychotherapy, right? Which kind of got me thinking about um, how how important, you know, like I told you about Sopranos, right? And in, mm-hmm. in the show, Tony Soprano and the therapist, the, his psycho- psych- psychologist or psychiatrist, is it psychiatrist? Psychiatrist, I think, psych- therapist, psychiatrist. Like they're this. like those are the two main characters of, of and and a lot of the times like he would come and he would tell her about stuff that's going on but he would like hide the information like who it is and he would say oh i'm having this problem with this person and, mm-hmm. and then like she would give him advice or not advice but she would kind of you know have this therapy session and then he ends up he leaves thinking like getting ideas for how to deal with this relationship right (laughs) what's going on here and things like that and he actually like i always say when i watch that show i'm like she's the real boss (laughs) because she's the real she's the one like behind the scenes like really controlling his brain so i always thought that like and just from our conversations i feel like you know therapy has gone to this place where all about feelings and happiness and like trauma and all of this shit, which I think is really like doing more damage than good in society. Because most Mm -hmm. of these people are just rich people, not rich people, but people that are not really suffering, like physically, but, you know, having like these first world problems, right? Okay. I actually think that where therapy can really be used is in business. Because like I, if entrepreneurs actually, um, because business is is all about psychology. Business is all about psychology in terms of leading people. Like sales <laughs> is all about psychology. Marketing is all about psychology. <laughs> Knowing how, like who to hire, who to fire, when to hire, when to fire. everything is all about relationship and psycho, human psychology. So I actually think that therapy therapists can help if they do if they're good therapists, entrepreneurs more than anyone else. And I, I feel like that's I would rather see like psychotherapy being used in a more tangible problem solving way like mm-hmm. that than just something that rich people go to pay to get feel good. Or yeah, you because know, I want to be happy. Yeah. <laughs> do you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, I guess it's it depends like from reasons why somebody is going to therapy because um, many times the experience is I feel relieved and uh, this is good. So I guess that it happens that people sometimes clients are stuck in that feeling mode. So they actually create a space where they vent but uh, they are not, even though this is important to have a place where actually somebody can hear you out and you can um, feel relieved. So this means that you need to find that somewhere else out of therapy because it definitely shows some important need that you have. But um, some clients are stuck in that loop especially if they don't have uh, something specifically they want want to work on or maybe if they don't have some goal that are that is set um, with a therapist so basically there is no a problem to be solved they are just emotions that yeah. need to be regulated you know that's the number one um because you know I write copy for a lot of these life coaches Mm -hmm. spiritual gurus and you know trauma people Mm -hmm. the number one message that resonates the most in copywriting this is the number one especially for female audience is that hey do you feel like you're stuck and you're unhappy but you're not sure why (laughs) like that message resonates with so many people it's unbelievable like like it's so shocking because it doesn't resonate with me at all but then i know that whenever i say that people go crazy (laughs) 
People are so, like, oh my gosh, oh my gosh, you read my mind. Oh, that's exactly how I feel. <laughs> so, yeah, I, I, I hear that out a lot of time. Like, do you, do you recognize yourself in this? And then they explain, like, always struggle, yeah. always, always fighting for something, but never get anything in return. Um, so... Yes, it's it's resonating with someone's pain, you know, but doesn't give a solution. And it shows that we have uh, this need to be uh, nurtured with someone who can um, give us that that uh, soft, comfortable place to to acknowledge. But that's why that. I think it's um, it's that's why I don't think it really helps people because. When I look, remember last week you said you're gonna go see most like these therapists and talk to these mm -hmm. coaches to see how mm -hmm. they are. Like you will be shocked because what I see is a lot. I see a lot of people who knows how to sell the pain. Oh, do you, you know, do you are, are like are you are you married and you have a good job and you know everything should be happy? But you know, do you feel like something is missing in your life? Do you feel like there's got to be more to life than this, right? Mm -hmm. Those message, yes, we're so, there. Like marketers have learned this trick to know how to write this copy in a way that will sell the pain, that will make you resonate and buy this product. The problem yeah. is the product doesn't solve their pain. <laughs> so all they did was okay, I got sold to this product thinking I need it, and I paid a lot of money, and it didn't fix my problem yeah um there's this um this victimhood mentality where we are so so soft and weak so that um we build uh, our identity over our pain so um I guess that I was thinking a lot of, of, of something uh, before our call. Uh, there's, I don't know if you heard for locus of control. So locus of control is how we see where is the control. If our locus of control is on the inside, my first thought would be okay how can i make this better what happened what did i do um sometimes it can go too much into uh questioning ourselves first if our locus of control is external then we will question why is he doing that to me so we will blame more the more the government friends family kids nowadays are like this and like that so um i guess when now that i'm like connecting these things so when somebody is addressing someone's pain and do you feel like this like everything doesn't make sense and la 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 la, la and then they're kind of prolonging this pain it kind of it doesn't put back control into person's life like okay this sucks so That's this true. is so bad you're automatically saying, oh, you can pay money to fix this problem. That's what they're saying. <laughs> and, and Oh, just buy this product for $29.99 <laughs> and I'll make that problem go away. <laughs> and even that is not such a problem. If you actually oh. want to fix that, if you search for a solution and if you get a solution, this is the point of therapy is actually to search for help outside but the point is to get that help or to stop doing that if this doesn't help you and to try something else so if you can but I'm, what i'm saying is that that marketing message yeah. is almost designed to attract the yeah. the people that are their their locus of control what is what is control is like locus from of outside control. yeah, yeah. Exactly. It attracts those people, is what I'm saying. Exactly. 
And I've recently heard for women's uh, circles. I don't know if that exists. Um, it exists here. Like Maybe women's it's... group? Yeah, yeah. It's called women's circles. When... Uh, for example, women are connected maybe when it's full moon or when it's some something. So they are kind of gathering that kind of sisterhood. We are in the same, we feel the same, we are in the same pain. We've been through so many things. So they kind of support each other. Um, but every time... So it's like I, a community, community of women. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And... When I first, when I firstly heard like, okay, there are some women there together, they want to uh, help each other. It was like, mm, this is cool. But then I actually tried to find those, um, those pages when they are telling that. And everything is so whiny, so, I don't know that I, I don't know what will, will I do there because they're so kind of oh let's cuddle let's enjoy now in each other's company and because we are I don't know we are from the same spirit or something like that it totally doesn't make sense and it sounds like the locus of control is on the outside yeah there's you know, no I, I think those groups essence yeah, it's because they're there. Those are groups that are made of. Uh, it's 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 created out of thin air. Like for example, I like I think those groups work if it's like, uh, women's only tennis club, then I think it'll work because the main subject is tennis, right? <laughs> or like women's only, yeah. let's say, running club. Then because the main thing is still about running, but if it's yeah. just a women's group for just the sake of being a woman. What I found is that a lot of times that creates um, it because it, I, I worked in a company, like I told you last week, the company that owns AMC, which is the one that did Breaking Bad. Okay. But that, that same company also women's, owns a channel called Women's Entertainment. And <laughs> this entire floor where I worked in, I, I happened to work on that floor, was Women's Entertainment. And like it was like 90% women. Like from the CEO top down, er, like everyone's all women. And it was like the opposite of the normal patriarchy that people say. It's like a woman CEO with a male assistant. <laughs> and that whole group, that whole floor, every time we go, every time we pass by it to go fix computers, we just called it, oh, this is the man haters wing. <laughs> mm. Because th this group of women, it wasn't even, it was less about woman empowerment. And this is more about hating men and their hatred and resentment against men. Mm -hmm. And I just didn't like I, I didn't like the whole vibe there, like. Yeah. There is. Uh, I watched one TikTok yesterday. Uh, if I understood, there was uh, just a little bit of a context. So, um, a female at a birthday, she invited maybe seven people on her birthday in the restaurant. Uh, one of her friends uh, came, or maybe they're together, um, came as a couple, so male and a female. And the rest of them were women. Single. Um, they came there single. I don't know if they are single. Oh, they just came alone. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So I so feel bad for the guy. <laughs> and where was the problem? When the check came, so mm -hmm. the bill, um, they said, so these three women said, like, oh, you're the only guy. You should pay it. You should pay for it. Even though he's... Like jokingly? Like, no. No, it was like, you're the only guy here, so you should pay for it. And the bill was $700. So he was like, why should I pay for it? Because I'm a man. I mean, it's kind of... Yeah, that's ridiculous. Ridiculous. Yeah. Like, even you think it's ridiculous, right? Of course. I would um, think most people think 
whether they're women or men, I would imagine most people would say that's ridiculous. I mean, unless it was a joke. Don't you think? Like, what was the comment section like? See, I always read the comments because the comments is where the truth is. (laughs) Wait for me. But I think what I recall, it was divided. There are some people that... Oh, really? Yeah. Yeah, I think... But I will double check, like, number of likes for that comment. Um, so so the commentator of that uh, video, she said, like, this is a quick example how to uh, lesson how to become and stay single. Um, I mean, for, for these women, because they are blaming oh, yeah. uh, opposite gender for for something they are responsible for. So uh, I've been thinking a lot about this locus of control because uh, this is where I um, was thinking about this made truth sandwich because I've read somewhere like you should always look to the bright side or something like that. And uh, let me. This wasn't the question that I wanted to ask you, but uh, I, oh, I think okay. we're gonna get there anyway. Okay. So, well, well, so let's let's finish this conversation since we're in it right now, and because uh, this is compl- what I, the question I was gonna ask you is completely unrelated to this. <laughs> but we'll get there because okay. it, it's more, it's related to Mitchell Sandwich. Um. Anywhere, but locus of anywhere. control. That's where we were. Yeah. Yeah. And um, I was thinking about, not about this, about another thing, which is um, who is responsible for how we feel. Because people say that, you know, you, you're not responsible for other people's feelings. And so... I was thinking, like, what's the answer? Are we responsible or not? Um, so what do you think? I will tell you what I think. After. Are we responsible for other people's feelings? I guess this is a... I, I think this is kind of um, um, how I see it, right? Like, you, you heard me say you have to learn the rules before you break them right mm-hmm. and i think what we under what we need to do is we on un- we have to understand how to get along with society how other people feel and all of that to get a gauge for what the what the reality is for example like so for example should should a man pay for uh on the first date should a man pay for the woman i think from my experience the reality is that's pretty much the norm, okay? Mm-hmm. Um, when somebody is dressed nice, should I compliment that person? From my experience, that's the norm. So there, there are certain norms that I think, you know, that that I would abide by, right? Because, so I need to, I think, learn all the norms. And then I have to understand, okay, what is my belief? What What is my personal belief? And what is what are the things that goes against that norm, and and understand that if I do, that I'm gonna get treated as such, right? For example, mm-hmm. like if I'm being a racist, <laughs> then people are gonna treat me like a racist, and it, like so. I think we we have we have some sort of a social contract with the world on how we're supposed to act and how you're gonna get treated if you go out of that. But then once. I think that is exactly like learning the rules part. <laughs> like when I design first, I have to learn design by copying other designs. How, do, how does the normal people do it, right? I'll learn all the basic rules. And then I can, from there, create my own style. And then from there, and then now I can decide, okay, I don't agree with this about the society. I don't agree with this about society. And then I, then I have to be willing to take the risk of, <laughs> you know, them 
like yes i think we're not i'm not responsible for other people's feeling to a point where um i'm not responsible for hurting your feelings for example mm -hmm. but if you if i hurt your feelings i have to deal with the consequences of that right so if, if i hurt a friend a feeling of somebody's friend a friend's feeling then i have to make a decision do i want to stay with friends with this person or is what I'm about to say so important that I'm willing to break this friendship over it? Do you understand what I mean? So at the end of the day, I'm not responsible for it. I'm responsible for the consequences of it. <laughs> so and if you same thing with free speech, I'm I'm not responsible for you being offended. But if you are offended by it, and you never want to talk to me again, I have to, it's my decision there, right? Do I want, am I willing to live with that consequence or not? Or if you get canceled, for example, <laughs> if you said something and then now you got canceled, right? If, if I say something and people want to unfollow me, like I think one time I did a post and like a bunch of people unfollow me. Yeah. That's the price that I'm paying for it. <laughs> yeah, but this is not answer to my question. Because... Well, I, I, the answer is I'm not responsible. If you know your close friends' insecurities and you said something that kind of hurt them or they start crying... So would you feel responsible for how they feel or not? I mean, did I say it because I believe it or did I just say it to piss them off? <laughs> Do you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, let's say you... You say from a good, you said it from a good place, but you didn't know that it will be taken that way. You, you assume they would say, oh, okay, let me hear you I out. I guess we need to de define the word responsible then. Like responsible how? Like, do I have to pay that person <laughs> for damage control? Like, uh, what does that even mean? Okay, let's not get stuck. Uh -huh. So because that happens a lot, where I'll say something, and then I mean to, I didn't mean to hurt their feelings or anything like that. Mm -hmm. I was just saying a fact, but it hurt their feelings. Do you understand what I mean? Yeah. So do you, and after that, take into accountability the fact that then I have to decide, like, okay. Maybe I shouldn't say like, maybe I shouldn't say like this next time. And that, like I you know what I mean? Well, this and means that I, you you owned own the fact that even though you don't have intention to hurt somebody, something happened that so you Yeah. So I, I have to make that judgment call. Because sometimes mm. it's like, okay, next time I think I'm not gonna I'm not going to say that or I'm not, I'm going to say it differently. Right. So, uh, but then sometimes I'm like, no, there's no way I could have said this any better. <laughs> so it's out of my control. Yeah. Okay. So let me tell you my thought process. So usually I hear I uh, see people online saying you're not responsible for other people's feelings. It's it's their own thing. You cannot, um, you're not guilty or whatever it is. So, um, but then I was thinking we can say if this is the truth. So we can say I made you laugh. But we cannot say I made you cry. So this is. Kind of if both are those things are emotion, how come we can say I made you laugh, but we cannot say I made you cry because we are responsible for other people's feelings. Um, so 
Um, That's a good question. <laughs> <laughs> but um, the thing is, you you also know that you can say the same thing, and two people can hear this exact same thing, and one、mm-hmm. might laugh and one might cry. Truth. Well, that also proves that、uh, our words are influencing other people, can influence other people's emotion. So, so then my mind went to、um, the other thing, which is、uh, there are some people that are always questioning themselves. This locus of control. That are always questioning themselves. Okay,、uh, I made you cry, or so how can I make this up to you? And they're questioning themselves. And then you have other people that can say mean things. And if other people,、uh, if other person is、um, feeling bad about that, they're like, I, I, "You're responsible for how you feel. I'm not responsible for how you're going to deal with your feelings."、Mm-hmm. So they are having more external locus of control. So the idea is that. <laughs> so if you think that、um, you are not responsible for other people's feelings, then you should reverse from what you are thinking. I mean, I don't know even how to explain this. Yeah. So, what do you mean by reverse? Let me see how. Like, I, I don't believe even with laughter. I don't think it's like if I might be a comedian, and you know, like I, I'm not responsible for somebody to laugh because I can say a joke,、mm-hmm. and so the, the, they might not laugh because the joke is not funny or something like whatever it is, right? Yeah. So, it, I still don't think it's my responsibility to make you laugh. Unless I'm a, you're paying me to make you laugh. <laughs> yeah, but、right. you know the the intention was there. So from this person telling the joke, their intention was to make someone laugh. So if nobody laughed, but is that a responsibility? And also, I think it also depends on whether、I、it's mean, a, somebody you have a personal relationship with versus a stranger, too, right? Because obviously, I'm gonna treat people I know better, <laughs> nicer <laughs> than a stranger. <laughs>、right? I mean, many people would do the opposite; they they treat closer people so bad, but they are good with people they don't know. Because they can say whatever they want to their、um, close people, but、uh, in mean no, way, mean.、Yeah. they like.、It. So. Yeah, I guess it, it. But but again, like that, that just goes to show you the the reason why they did that is because oh, I can say whatever to you. I know you're, you're, like I know you're you're not going to be mad at me. Versus, if if this person I'm I don't want I want this person to like me, then I'm gonna、mm-hmm. say it in a way that, you know, is is more kinder or whatever it is, right? Yeah. So, it's it it's not a responsibility. I would say it's more like、um, it's 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 kind of it's more like responsible for their relationship, not for their feeling. But it's how I if I hurt somebody's feeling, I'm not responsible for how they feel. But I am responsible for this relationship. Like if <laughs> you know, in return, if that person hates me now, yeah, I'm responsible for that. I'll okay, accept that. I mean, okay, when we when we go to clarify this, because I wanted to use this common saying. I, you're not responsible for other people's feelings. So, 
that's why this is there is what do you think that saying means What do I think that means? Yeah. When you see somebody like on Instagram saying, you're not responsible for other people's feelings. Because um, like usually that's said to people pleasers, right? Usually that message is for people pleasers, no? Yeah. For people that are questioning themselves. Um, but it's also used to help them. But also, it's used by anyone who who can read it. I mean, who can it? It kind of become, at least my assumption is like a norm that you're not responsible for. Other but people. that's exactly why I say no advice is there. There's no advice that's like a blanket statement, right? Like it's you know what I mean. And that's this is why. That's a perfect myth to sandwich. Because that that advice works for somebody who's a people pleaser, who's like an extreme people pleaser. It's a good advice for that person. Yeah. But it might not be a good advice for people like Ben Shapiro, for example, who already doesn't care about other people's feelings. <laughs> Do you understand what I mean? Yeah. So Okay. So people pleasers would would their first thought would be that they are responsible for how other person feels. So in their case, they should practice that they are not responsible. If they are um, more like a narcissistic trait um, people, then that are it's easier for them to blame other people then they this advice is not for them so it's kind of the yeah. opposite i mean do you think it could be both do you think somebody can be like uh narcissistic and people pleaser at the same time because i actually think that people pleasing is a very selfish trait it's not really a selfless trait um you have you have many narcissists that are kind of altruistic narcissists um i think there is an expression for them they are i don't know it's yeah i think cool. altruistic. altruistic i think um uh, there's a there's six types. vulnerable narcissist. There's a vulnerable narcissistic system, mm -hmm. and then a different kind of narcissism. I think there there are six types, something like that. Um, oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I thought there was two. <laughs> you have the grandiose, vulnerable, covert, maybe altruistic. Um, malignant and maybe one more anyway uh, this yeah maybe the, the two i heard was vulnerable and grandiose okay okay so uh, you have this altruistic narcissism when you know that um so prototype is a mother that is always there like helicopter parent always there for their kids and um, uh, cooking, preparing everything. And then they're kind of controlling with their generosity. So um, there is, is the, something... One of the mom that are always trying to feed you? <laughs> like Asian moms are always trying to feed me and I don't even want to eat. And they like always try to feed me. I mean, this can be expression of love, just to to say. Um, but but um, you can control with that uh, with that love, that people pleaser, mm -hmm. people pleasing trait. 
So then you kind of expect that other people would be nicer to you or would give you attention or that you deserve something more because you're that good person. So, so definitely this can be, um, because I feel like I'm both, I feel like I'm, I'm a narcissist and a people pleaser. That's why I, that's why I ask, can you be both? (laughs) Okay. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. So that's why like, would, well, how, how would I hear that message? You're not responsible for other people's feelings. I, I mean, guess, you have, uh, my my personal personal experience with you is that you have some switches. Mm-hmm. So sometimes you it's so it's so nice to talk to you. It's beautiful because you are calm and you kind of choose. It's not like you're choosing your words, but there is something very comfortable in 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 the vibe and sometimes i don't know you're pissed off about something and whatever i say it goes like it's not an attack it looks like we are just debating but i sense some some different i think it depends on who i'm talking to so you're absolutely right. Like I, I think I'm more harder, harsher on people I care about. Mm-hmm. If if I'm talking to somebody and this person is already a lost cause, like, mm-hmm. uh, okay, you you keep being stupid if you want, then <laughs> I'll actually just be nice to them, and I'll agree with them, even though even on things that I don't agree with, because I know that I'm like all I'm gonna do by disagreeing with them or whatever it is. I'm just going to hurt that person's feeling. But I, if I actually care about this person and I really want this person to know the truth and or like I, I, I believe that they're misinformed or they believe in a myth, mm-hmm. then I will be a little bit harsher to say, no, you're wrong. And here's why. Do you know what I mean? Okay. So when you say that you are both, do you connect mm-hmm. these? Yeah. And I can Uh, even sense when I'm being like, whenever, when I'm being super just nice and like, Oh, good job. Like everything's good. Everything's happy. And all of that. Whenever I'm being that, that means I'm checked out. It it means in my mind, it means that I I have no, I have no desire to convince you. (laughs) Okay. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, Yeah. So, Okay. And when you are passionate, then it means that you, your heart. I actually want to convince you. (laughs) Like, Mm -hmm. (laughs) do you know what I mean? (laughs) And sometimes it's like, most of the time it's because I, I actually, I have a relationship with this person. Right. Mm -hmm. Or second, or like if, if they're like my employees or some, something that's going to, affect my business <laughs> like affect me directly because they, they're they working for me i need them to know the truth or whatever it is and sometimes it's just like sometimes like i might have a relationship with this person but i can clearly see that i'm not getting through to them that nothing i say will change their mind then i'll just okay there's no point <laughs> going forward i'll just i'll just be nice because do you think There's it depends? No do you think it also depends from the amount of criticism they're, they're willing we to ma- accept? No, 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 no. no. Um, if we imagine <laughs> there is some like because that that that's one of it. Like if I see that somebody's very receptive and they're they're actually listening and they're willing to mm-hmm. um, willing to change their mind, then I'll actually be more more direct with them. Mm. But sorry, continue. There's something about criticism because sometimes, I mean, you're, you're definitely, definitely so self-critical. It's, 
it's obvious. So then I imagine there is kind of a, a place, like a box of criticism. So you can direct that to yourself and maybe in your work and to make something to be so good when you make a carousel. Or so you have that, you cannot just, this doesn't evaporate. So it's there. And um, when you see other people's work, I get. I guess that you need to control that to not. Um, yeah. Judge it's, too much other person. Yeah, because I think people that are like I know I'm critical towards other people because mm -hmm. I'm critical to myself, right? Like I think it's usually people who are judgmental are usually they judge themselves, like you know what I mean. It works like that, in my opinion. It's because. For example, I, I think a lot of people like project themselves onto others, right? So yeah. I think people that are racist <laughs> call other people racist. <laughs> Do you understand what I mean? So because, because like, like for example, like I, I heard this one story from this woman who wrote this book called uh, White, Fragil White Fragility. And she was telling about a story of like how this is how we're all racist. Like she said one time she got invited to a birthday party and um, she she went there and then there was two group of people at the park. There was a whole bunch of white people here and a bunch of black people here. And she didn't know who, 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 who the party was for. She was just invited by a friend. So she just, mm -hmm. you know, automatically went to the group with the white people. And then it turned out like she actually was the other party. And then she went there and then she felt uncomfortable, even though like, you know, she's not racist. She felt a little bit uncomfortable with, with the surrounding. And and she says, like, that's like an example of, uh, like, that how, how everyone is racist, right? And when I heard that, I'm like, bitch, speak for yourself. Because I'm, if I go to a group of black people, I don't feel uncomfortable at all. <laughs> Do you understand what I mean? Like, don't project your racism, your racist thing. Just because you're racist and you feel like that. Don't automatically assume that other uh, everyone else feels like that too, right? Mm -hmm. And that's like a good example of why people project their own insecurities and their own flaws onto other people. Do you understand yeah. what I mean? Yeah. So yes, I am very critical to myself. Therefore, I am also critical to other people. But like you said before, I try my best to control it. <laughs> it, it doesn't always work. But I try to live by the whole, you know, like... Marcus Aurelius of how he says, yes, I'm going to be critical to myself and I'm going to try to be the best version of myself. Yet, I'm not going to expect that from other people. Like yeah. today, I sh when I go into, out into the world, I'm going to be met with ignorance, hate, all of these things. And I have to accept that. That's Those, those people yeah. are still my brothers, you know. Like I try to live like that you know, it rarely works, <laughs> but I try my best. That's the goal I'm yeah. striving for, I guess, is what I'm saying. <laughs> okay, uh, a little bit off topic uh, thought. Um, so, <laughs> that's funny. <laughs> no, because you reminded me of the whole, the, the projecting thing and like it reminded me of that story. Um, mm -hmm of that woman like it was like it sounds like you're the racist not me <laughs> to, uh, but that's why i hate it when people say that right oh uh, like uh what do you call it like white priv like people say white privilege oh uh, like mm -hmm. white people should feel guilt and shame for me like bitch what like I, like some white people should feel guilty so the racist ones <laughs> Yeah, but I think most, for the most part, most white people I met are not racist. <laughs> I don't know if I sh if I showed you a video where they ask uh, black people if they are proud because they are black, and then um, white people if they are proud because they are white. <laughs> and... <laughs> <laughs> That just sounds so wrong, right? <laughs> Imagine, <laughs> but why? Like, that's so weird, no? Why? Why is that wrong? Like, if I if I say, "Oh, I'm black and I'm proud," like that's like a saying, right? 
Why can't white people say, oh, I'm white and I'm proud? But that sounds so wrong. No, it's so wrong. It's not legit to, to feel proud because, because yeah. you know, it's your skin. You, you, every, everyone should feel proud except white people. That's basically what they're saying. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> um, yeah, I think I think you should have some kind of levels of criticism. So maybe level one, two, and three. <laughs> um, because uh, sometimes I'm when I bring you some Mitra sandwich, if I am kind of already have that idea and put that and spend some time and I feel like mm, this is good. At least, you know, I'm <laughs> going to be tortured <laughs> with this Mitra sandwich, but I'll survive. So I'm confident. <laughs> You know, I sell before our call yeah. and of course, by the end of the call, I'm devastated and it's, I cannot use it. So there are so many flaws in my argument. So that's it. But then a few times I would also hear you commenting on some, some Mitchell sandwich that obviously it wasn't kind of um it was let's say a from a beginner's mid truth sandwich mm -hmm. and you would see so you could see good things about that uh carousel so you were you approached that from a supportive place and from a gen you respected that person's energy to actually sit down and to write to have some idea uh, to work on that and to have the lesson. And I was like, mine was better, so better than this. But I was, I was tortured. And there's, there's so many flaws in this. So I guess, so my assumption now is that you have different levels of criticism according to like, what is so let me ask you a question. I, I I know exactly what you're talking about, right? So when something like that happens, right? Let's break it down. I'm not saying I was right, right? Because okay. I, I know that I can, I can, you know, <laughs> instead of Mitchell sandwich, I, I should do the compliment sandwich. I should be like, oh, Yelena, <laughs> this, this part was really, really good. Maybe this part, like, uh, I can do that, right? Um, yeah. And maybe I should do that. Maybe that's a personality trait that I should change. Um, mm. and no, just me. This is my suggestion. Sorry for interrupting. Mm -hmm. Just mm -hmm. if you have like a level one, two, and three, mm -hmm. and then, so you say, okay, let me give you. What's the what's the bad one? What's the good one? So like is level one uh, beginner better or? Okay. Beginner, like uh, medium, mm -hmm. or and then I don't know. So I'm for you. I'm doing level three. <laughs> you torture my sandwich till the end. Yeah. So so what what do you say? I should warn but, you. Like, you know, this is the level three. <laughs> yeah. So. Because because it's really, I mean, I'm. This is totally subjective. And like I'm responsible for my feelings, so the fact <laughs> is, <laughs> I'm not responsible for your feeling, Yelena. <laughs> the fact is, my confidence till the end of our uh, torture of my sandwich mm -hmm. is kind of getting lower and lower. But if I knew that this is the third level of criticism, then I could kind of oh, okay. So if I warn you up front. <laughs> That. Yes. Just so you know, this is level three. Okay. So yes. just to just to kind of tell you right now, everything that I've been doing with you on this podcast when we go through Mitch Sandwich, it's like it's like level ten. <laughs> okay. <Hey>. So <laughs> good. It's like it's beyond level three. Okay. And the reason why is because it's one thing for me to 
go on a, a Sunday service or these calls, these Zoom calls with the beginners, especially. Yeah. <laughs> and I have like 15 minutes to give them feedback. There's a certain amount I can do there versus with you, who's been working on myth, truth sandwiches for a while. And you, I know that your critical thinking level is higher. And I know that you can, um, you know, you've thought about things l- longer. And yeah. not only that, we're talking for three hours. <laughs> then I'm going to step it up like to, to the max. Do you understand what I mean? Because yeah. I feel like I have the opportunity to do, do that. And I feel like we can really get somewhere with that. Right. So yeah. just so you know, it's an extreme difference there. So don't think like yeah, I'm and criticizing I'm... your work. If, if that person was here, <laughs> they'll okay. probably leave crying. <laughs> and you would be responsible for that. <laughs> but at the same time, doesn't it feel much, much better when I compliment you? Because you know that if I compliment you, you know that it's a genuine, genuine compliment. Yes. Like, you know I'm not going to say that just for the sake yes. of... <laughs> yes. Yes. So just hear me out. So this is yes, <laughs> but. So this okay. is good. I'm I'm so grateful that I have this opportunity. So this is our question. Um, what also... So... So I'm just sharing my experience of how I (laughs) deal with it. So, you know, when one part of me asked the question, like, are you judgmental, but you're hiding it? Mm -hmm. Or you are genuinely, like, um, supportive to a person that is, like, just beginning to write? Um, so I guess it would be, um, so my, yes, I have advice. My advice would be to have this kind of, I don't, I don't know how to, if this is possible, maybe just to be aware of that, or maybe to, to tell that a person. Oh, I'm very aware of it. Okay. Then, then I think us- that's like my worst, I think that's my worst trait as a teacher because <laughs> Even though what I, the work that I've been doing is copywriting, marketing, and all of those things, is I've been doing that for a while, and I think that's my area of expertise. But teaching is definitely not my area of expertise. I'm, I'm very new to teaching, right? So, um, yeah, I'm very aware of that. And I, 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 I'm aware that that's also my flaw that I need to work on. I guess I, I. So maybe my thought is about. Um, for I wish other... I could control it though <laughs> so easily. <laughs> the good thing is that you are controlling that. This is the good thing because um, I notice how you're approaching differently with some other examples. Um, so you're controlling it but maybe you are i lose that control sometimes maybe other person is not aware of that because um can i say something mm -hmm. i think i can control it but the moment when i lose that control is actually when i see a glimpse of I feel like I can push it. <laughs> okay. If I just let go and I'm like, okay, uh, I, I could try my best and whatever. It happens, happens. Blah, blah, blah. Then I think I can control it, right? But when I can see like, okay, I, can, I think this person could do it so much better. Or I think I can really step this person to the next level. That's when I oh. lose control of it, right? So you and kind I'm of- very aware of that. So it it means it. But I can't. I don't know why I can't stop myself. <laughs> I mean, probably it's um, it's tempting because you you want yeah, somebody yeah. to storytelling, yeah. so then you you lose it. But 
this is good. So what I will do when I notice that, I will just announce it. So this is good. Let's let's push just a little That's bit a more. Good tip, yeah. Yeah. And then say or I'll I'll is. even like say I think I think I used to um I I think uh at night I'll because actually this happened a lot in my agency mm -hmm. where like somebody will start crying. <laughs> It's always girls, <laughs> but uh, <laughs> so at at one point, um, I like, um, one point I had to actually like say it up front. I'd be like, okay, you want, like, you want the, what was the word that we used? Like something like you want the brutal truth, <laughs> like you want the, but there it was like another funny word that we used that. That was basically like uh, I don't know. I can't remember it now. But I, like I would break the ice by saying, "Hey, like here mm -hmm. comes the here comes the real truth." Okay, like here comes like the you know what I mean. And and that that would actually like kind of break the ice. Number one, because it's like it was like a funny. Mm -hmm. It was a little bit funny. And then also now that person knows that everything that I'm, that's coming afterwards is they're they're expecting harsh <laughs> something harsh yeah. after that. But okay. I also think that it's uh, it by saying that it separates the because you know that like if if you hear, go back and hear me talk to you, mm -hmm. never once I'm actually criticizing you. I'm always yeah. criticizing the idea, right? It's so like I'm I'm. I'm Nothing I say is, is a personal attack on you. It's a personal attack on the idea. Yeah. <laughs> I, sort of, and because I, I believe that you can do better. You know what I mean? Yeah. So so I, I think by saying that up front and by breaking the ice, I say, okay, here's the here's like the harsh truth, right? It also kind of maybe it's it's clear for that person it's like this is nothing on you. It's it's the idea. I mean, I okay, okay. I this is one thing. Mm -hmm. What I had on my mind was something slightly different, which was to because I know that you're criticizing idea, but many times when we are invested in our idea, it's hard not to feel at least sad about that you kind of you you wanted this and I know. And uh, that this is where I would say I, I'm not responsible for that <laughs> because I know exactly how you feel. And when I first started as a designer and clients or my boss would attack my designs and it was clearly, he was not attacking me. They were not attacking me personally. They were, they were attacking the design. They're like, Oh, this is, I don't, I don't think this is working here. Blah, blah, blah. Like, you know, they were like, and it would bother me. <laughs> Like, like oh, and I would get all defensive about it, right? Because, like, it's I, I just spent fucking a week on this. What are you talking about, right? But then, through running my agency, I, I, I just had to learn how to, I, I just had to learn how to know that, like, yeah, you're not responsible for my feeling. That's just my feeling. Yeah. That's just coming out of illogical things, right? And once I realized that, once I actually became the the person who's presenting. I when I became the client and I saw that designer was getting very defensive, mm -hmm. that's when I stopped being defensive about my designs. Do you understand what I mean? And I would actually when when a from that moment when cl client would criticize my design, it opened my eyes. I'm like, holy shit, like you're right. Why didn't I think of that? <laughs> Like mm -hmm. and it really like opened my eyes to like listening to those, those criticisms, whereas in before I was very like blocked, right? Yeah, I mean definitely if if we are alone to deal with it, we will deal with it one way or the other. So this is out of question. My attempt my attempt was how to deal with it in more smoothly way. Because when you say hard truth, 
this is good because you're having somebody that will really help you. And this is the most helpful helpful way that you can have someone's guidance. So just on that way, it's, um, it's hard to see good things when somebody's pointing out only. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So... I, 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 I know. Because I know, like, um, I've also worked with clients who would, who, who would constantly criticize my, criticize my work. And then it gets to a point where I don't even want to do anything anymore. Because, but I think that usually happens when you're chasing validation, though. It's it's because like I subconsciously I'm chasing my client's validation, right? Like when I present something, I want isn't this client that, to be like, yeah. isn't that a human <laughs> thing to do? Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. I know that that it's. I'm I'm just and saying that I, I'm I'm just saying that that's the reason. So, are you saying that we should it, not change? It's that? easier. Yeah. It it becomes easier as, a, and here's the thing, right? Like I I've, I've been a creative my whole life, so you know, like I'm very used to this type of dynamic, right? Mm -hmm. Um, but that's the thing. That's this is actually one of the biggest advice that I would give to a creative. Like if you're if you're gonna work as a professional in a creative field, you really really have to get over that ego of like chasing validation or I want people to love my work. Like we really need to let go of that. And we, we have to present our carousels, our designs to clients or whoever, if you, if you're presenting to me, I mean, you're not a creative, so I'm, this, this is less for you, more for maybe designers and copywriters. But when we present our work, we almost have to uh, pretend like that's not even our work, that I'm presenting somebody else's work. That's how much detached we have to be from the work mm -hmm. to truly work as a creative. That that's what differentiates an amateur from the pro. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Mm hmm Yeah. So how to support someone on that way? Because from a person that is amateur and in our communities, we are community. We're all amateurs. We are attached. You know, the easiest way to do it is for, I mean, if it was like a designer, one of the things that I used to do is like, I would have one of my designers mm -hmm. present somebody else's design to the client. So like, instead of this person presenting their own design to the client, this person will present their design to the client. Because once they do it, and then this person would present their design to the client. And once they, they, they see how that goes, they're very, very aware of their own flaws. It's, it's kind of the same reason why I have uh, somebody write a myth through sandwich and another person rewrite it. <laughs> do you know what I mean? Because I think it's hard for us to see our own flaws where we're not killing our darlings, where we're being, you know, like it's hard for us to see that in our own work. But when we do it to somebody else and then we come back to our own work, it's a little bit easier for us to see, oh, shit, this is what I'm doing wrong. Can we do something like that in our community? For example, mm you know oh you know there there are some programs if you want to play secret santa with your friends so you kind of randomly yeah get someone's name so do something like that and then one person writes mitra sandwich sent to another person another person needs to rewrite it or to make something yeah. if they cannot rewrite it. Like anonymously, to, yeah. Yeah, and then to give a comment, to give feedback, <laughs> and to post and that. grade thing. it, yeah. Something like that. <laughs> you know, like that, we built the... Where I got the idea to rewrite people's carousel is I got the idea from this app that we built 
one of the first projects we did at Night Owl was for this research group in University of Toronto. And there was an app called Peer Scholar. And this is what exactly that software does. It's for creative writing, creative writing class where okay. people sending their essays and then it'll randomize and send it, send your essay to somebody else and it'll send their essay to me. And then it's anonymous. And now I have to go through and create it and leave my review. And then I do that four times. And after the fourth one, I have to now reread my own essay and I have to recreate it. And we've, you know, they've been running this for years. And what, what happens is usually like the first time around when they do the self, uh, self evaluation, they'll give themselves like an A or A minus. And then after they do the four and then it comes back, they'll give themselves like a B, like it'll go one grade below. <laughs> yeah. That would be a good idea. Yeah. Yeah, that 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 app exists. It's called Pure, Pure Scholar, and we built it. <laughs> I mean, for for that for University of Toronto. Yeah, 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 for their purposes. But imagine that that would be like yeah. storytelling on steroids. Yeah. Yeah, I wish I can. I wish there was an app like that that we could use, and it's integrated to Circle. That would be amazing. We'll figure it out. <laughs> okay. So I have a question for you. Please. You want to hear it? Sure. I'm so sorry that I, I was so harsh on you. I I kind of sensed it, and I was like, oh, I'm. I hope that, and towards like last maybe like. A month ago, I was like, ah, I hope Yelena doesn't get discouraged from this and stop. Because like the reason why I was so harsh on you, because I felt that you can take it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and, you know, I probably shouldn't have assumed that. But yeah. Mm, I mean, I I'm grateful and I I really want again to show you my ideas and to get the review like that um so but if it was difficult yes because i would feel a little bit devastated but if i knew in advance when you say okay are you ready for level three of criticism yeah. so this is like hard level yeah, I'm... take it the, the stuff that I was talking to you about was it wasn't even like a feedback on a carousel. Like if we wanted to turn that into a carousel, we probably easily could have turned into a carousel. But it was more like, how far can we push this idea just for yeah. us to find the, the real truth for it? Like this, the one you just brought up today, right? It's like something that really gets me thinking, right? I think the better way to approach that would might be something like... Um, what what do you think is the real truth? So if the myth is is the number one is the myth that I'm not responsible for your feelings. You're not responsible for other pe people's feelings. Is that a myth or is that a truth? Right. Number one. And then <clears throat> from there, what's the real truth? And like for us to really figure that out, I don't know. So that's that. This is an area that I haven't thought about. <clears throat> is this a question? Was the real it's, truth? No, no, it's, it wasn't a question. Okay, uh, uh, I, so, it wasn't a question. It was that. I mean, it was just a statement on how we should approach this. Like, if I were to approach this same topic, the way I would create the myth through sandwich is something like this. Um, everyone says, "Be kind," <laughs> right? <laughs> be you know practice empathy but the the truth is we're not responsible for other people's feeling that's how i would approach it because that is the lesson that i learned and that's it's what i feel is the most needed advice right but i think you feel the opposite you feel that everyone's saying you're not responsible for their feelings so what's 
Do you know what I mean? It really depends on what you think is like the myth out there. So what? Do you, so, so now I'll ask a question. What do you think is the real myth out there? Yeah. Um, the myth is you're not responsible for other people's feelings. The real truth is, yes, you are not responsible for other people other people's feelings but if people around you feel like shit then maybe it's about you something like that and who is this message for for i mean i could it makes sense for me <laughs> this is, see that's the thing right if you were saying that to me or if you made the carousel mm -hmm. and i saw it, it was like oh shit yeah that's so true i'm i'm ruining a lot of relationships like this <laughs> because i'm i'm I have this way of thinking, but would most people out there feel that way? Because I, I don't think, I think most people are not like me. Mm. Most people are not assholes. <laughs> you know what I mean? I mean, we can, maybe they are not like you, but they <laughs> are. <laughs> <laughs> they're not as bad as you son <laughs> i knew how this would sound but i do it i did it anyway <laughs> what i meant uh we talked about victimhood mentality where people are too sensitive they cannot um stand even other other person different opinion on anything or they would you cannot literally it's like walking on eggshells you know so so the thing is um even though you have most people, people are walking on eggshells no think? or is no I, i'm thinking about people that when we talked about victimhood mentality and the whole mm -hmm. let's say movement that we are so vulnerable and sensitive and mm -hmm, mm -hmm. um so people are mean and they are saying some harmful things so in that case oh, i see what you mean yeah they are also making other people feeling ugh, awkward around them so if they are going to read this um yes you're not responsible for other people's feelings but if other people are not feeling like you're talking about people who like air their dirty laundry like for example for yeah. example yeah. not necessarily like being mean to them but yeah, yeah. <laughs> mm, i mean you have i don't know like selfish people in terms of um manipulation like guilt tripping if you're a friend you would do such a thing for me or i think i'm kind of mudding the water a little bit now and i'm losing focus i yeah i think for the first thing you should think about is like think about uh, specifically the person that you're thinking of like for me okay. it really helps when i think of a specific person and then like is there a lot of people like that that needs to hear this you know what i mean or is this person really kind of is, is this person the minority do you understand mm -hmm. what i mean i mean if this is for people so okay let's say it like this if we have like internal and external locus of control this message is for people that have external locus of control so they they can be whatever narcissists or people pleasers um that are <laughs> glorifying their... can i say something yeah <laughs> okay so there's a lot of people like that on threads 
I don't know if you use threads or not, but threads is full of people like that. Okay. okay. And if you were to say what you said on threads, you know what kind of response you get? <laughs> you would get trashed with so many haters. And that's, I think that is kind of the problem with, um, that is kind of like the problem with the message of like, I mean, obviously what you're saying is the opposite of this, but you know how people that says, you know, just be kind, mm -hmm. just, just be, you know, just be empathetic, like, which is the opposite message. But the reason why those messages doesn't really work is because the people that are willing to listen to that message, it's, it's, it's because the person that you're talking to is exactly the type of person that doesn't want to hear that kind of message. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Do you understand what I mean? So what's, instead of accepting it, yeah. what they're going to be doing is they're going to reject it yes. and they're going to try to argue with you. <laughs> exactly. So there's also one thing in therapy. Uh -huh. People with external locus of control. So their projections of successful therapy is much lower mm. than for people with internal locus of control. Because every time they would have from a therapist a different perspective, um, like I have now a few examples on my mind. Hey, look at this. You have you say one thing, this thing, and you have this thing. But are these two? These two you know, they are kind of in collision and they they don't they are kind of i mean how can you say it like that so they are defensive yeah so so the question i is, guess that is a is there a point to write something like this i mean i guess we would have to say it in a very careful it has to be worded very carefully in a way that it doesn't offend them mm -hmm. and you know what maybe it does make sense because sometimes you know i've been there too i i think i have a sometimes i have like you know what i think i have is i i, I don't know if that external sense of external locus of control locus. is if it's like something natural is in our personality or not but i feel like i'm naturally like that i'm naturally have external locus of control and i'm forcing my i'm almost like training myself to have take personal responsibility mm -hmm. for everything right so when i see like some message on, sometimes I'll see, see a post or I'll see something and I get really defensive. I'm like, what the fuck are you talking about? Like, or somebody would give me a, a, a advice or something like that and immediately get triggered or, or defensive. So it doesn't help me at that moment because I'm being defensive. But then a few days later, I'll reflect back and like, oh, maybe what that person was saying was kind of true. Like, it, do you understand what I mean? So... Somebody might leave a hate comment, defensive mm -hmm. comment, but then you might still be able to get through to that person in the long run. Because now the, the seed has been implanted in their head. And I'm sure like not everybody's going to be like that, but if they smoke okay. weed, they will. Because <laughs> <laughs> that's what happened to me always. I would always get defensive. And then night I would go home and get smoke weed, and I'd be like, oh, maybe I shouldn't have said. Oh, maybe that person was right. Do you know what I mean? You can write that advice in comment section. Like, please, yeah. just, please smoke, like, smoke, just, just smoke weed every smoke. night. <laughs> Everything will be fine. I know you hate me right now, but because. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so this is an idea. So you wanted to ask me a question. Yeah, I like it. And I think it's the, the way we should uh, approach it is something like, well, first we have to be clear about the fact that, hey, if you are the one that's who's, who's saying like, 
um, you know, who, who who is like saying being passive aggressive, like saying, "Hey, you're, you're pressuring somebody to." Hey, if you really care about me, you would do this for me, <laughs> or like mm-hmm. you you should give first give a couple of examples of that that kind of behavior, and then say, "Hey, you might think that." You know, other people's feeling is not your responsibility. And then the real truth has to be a conclusion. Like from what I see, I, it, it sounds like, because at the end of the day, it's still not their responsibility, right? Somebody can be offended and hate you or whatever, and that they might not be your friend or enemy. But I think the, for me, because I'm that person, remember I said, like, I'm the, I'm the person who needs to hear this message. So I'm your mm-hmm. target audience. What I can tell you is what what will work for me is if you say, hey, you can live life like that, but you're going to die alone (laughs) if you keep doing that. Okay. Because you're just, I mean, like, yes, it's, yes, it's not your responsibility Yes, other people's not respons- other people's feeling is not your responsibility. But uh chasing everyone out of your life is your responsibility. <laughs> or something like that. You know what I mean? Cuz that's what that that, that activity that's what that's doing, right? Cuz I know it very deeply cuz I I chased a lot of people out of my life that way. So, you know, if if you keep doing that, you also know that you're going to, you know, ch- chase people away, like, from your life or something like that. Okay. So Does that make sense? Yes. Um, so let's think about examples. If you are that person that would say, if you really care for me, you would do this for me. Or so this is guilt tripping. So you have guilt tripping, you have gaslighting. Um, like, how could you say something like this? It's so stupid. Or. So I, I, I like, um, I always like advice that are going to help themselves. Not like, and this is why, why I, I think that the advice like, Hey, just be kind, just be selfless, but it doesn't really work because at the end of the day, the person that's going to accept that are already selfless, already kind, right? The, the ones that are not are just going to reject them. Like, why would I care about other people? How does that help me, <laughs> right? So, I I like giving advice that's going to help themselves, right? So, maybe it's something like, you know, like if you if you do these things, like if you're gaslighting, or if you're, you know, being dismissive, or you're all of those things. Like for me, the a, a good example is like, you know, like. I think I've said this, you you know that friend that's always constantly asking you for favors. They're like, Oh, can you watch my dog for me? I'm going on vacation. And then they like <laughs> and then like, you know and then you ask them to watch your dog and they're like, Oh no, I can't. I'm busy this week or something like that. Or the person that's like, Oh, always asking you for help, like when they're moving, it's like, Oh, can you come help me? It's like, Oh, I I don't have anyone. Like if they pressure you to help them. At some point, you're going to start ignoring their calls, <laughs> right? Mm. And if, if somebody keeps gaslighting you, at some point, they're going to start ignoring your, they're going to start ignoring your calls. I mean, I do. If somebody keeps asking me for a favor, <laughs> next time that person calls, I'm going to like, ah, <laughs> probably just wants to, want me to do something for them, <laughs> right? And that's how you lose friends. It's a pretty complex topic, huh? For for Carousel. 
I think that's also another reason why I'm so harsh on you because mm -hmm. all the ideas you have is like a little too complex for a carousel. <laughs> mm. it's, it's like a perfect amount of complexity for like a five minute video. Okay. Like if we were to riddle that down into one single idea is, yeah, like I'm not, if I can, you might be saying, uh, oh, other people's feeling is not my responsibility, but something like. It might that might be true, but you'll also lose a lot of friends that way, too. So if so, if if you're okay with that, keep being not responsible for other people's feelings. <laughs> mm -hmm. Like a, that would be like the one idea, I guess. Good. Okay, so good. you you might be saying other people's feelings are not your responsibility. That might be true, but you will lose many friends or many people. If you're okay with that, then keep feel not responsible for other people's feelings. Yeah. I think it, it, we could probably write it a little more smoother, but let's start with that. You know what I also found out and mm -hmm. um, Rosalinda told me this, but when you actually put it into a carousel, mm -hmm. like, when, cause you know, something about our brain where you write it in a bullet points or word doc. Mm -hmm. We happen to read the whole thing at once, even though it's like sentence by sentence. Mm -hmm. But something about separating that into its own slides and swipe like and seeing it one slide at a time, it helps you get more clear on how it should be written for some reason. Mm -hmm. And that's actually true for me too, because that's why I, I, I spend very little time writing it in a Google Doc. And as soon as I have even something a little bit, I will move it into a, to a design because that's where I do most, like majority of my writing, I do it in the, in the actual carousel because it forces me to read one one slide at a time. Do you understand what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. Marco is liking this. He agrees. I think he's showing <laughs> <this>. <laughs> He agrees. He, he doesn't. A few say times that. during our conversation, he just lift his thumb up like this is it. <laughs> he's, he's getting the live version of the <laughs> pressing the like button. <laughs> See, th the question that I was going to ask you is this: Okay, you joined Night Owl Nation like day one, and mm -hmm. from day one you were like very enthusiastic about it. But you, you don't really care about growing your business. You don't really care about making content or putting your content out there. So what is the motive, like, what is the drive for you? Why did you join Night Owl Nation? Most, most members, I think the incentive is like, I want to make better content, get more followers and grow my business, right? That's like the, the biggest reason why people join. Mm-hmm. But I'm finding that those are actually the the ones that benefit the least. <laughs> okay. Mm, I didn't know back then why I applied, but on the way, something just clicked and only later I found out why I actually applied. 
so what holds me here is that critical thinking part because um i feel that um it's so natural way to to so actually i have intention deep down there is there is desire to grow my business and to post there is somewhere in some basement um but i i've learned so much and i learned about content because before community i knew what i don't like but i didn't know how to do anything to offer anything different so i just know to notice when something doesn't res rec resonate with me so what actually was happening in the community i was so first of all noticing moments in your life sharing that uh and then how to combine that with some point you want to make so then not to read a definition and i was always like a good girl like want to learn definition to be sure that i have correct answer and then now everything is flipped around so no books no definition figure out so say what's on your mind maybe it's nothing and that's fine so that's better than this definition i was thinking of before so this kind of gave me some confidence a little bit of like this is what i think I, i'm thinking something so i don't know <laughs> something is deep down some confidence is building up from that place of thinking and seeing how how you're coming to, to some answer for yourself this is something that satisfy some part of me so then after that i started following other people that are um having this similar way of seeing things so no definition you you think for yourself and then you communicate and you you change through that communication um so that's it the whole like debating thing and how to um listen to an argument and have your argument and... like having confidence in your own thoughts your own opinions and your own yeah yeah so so now yeah that yes having confidence in your own thought that's actually one thing that i really want to help people actually too because there i think feel like there are a lot of people in our community that doesn't speak up in the small group or they don't put out mm -hmm. stories because they don't feel confident in themselves or they don't feel confident in their stories or their i really i really felt and still i'm feeling many times like i don't have developed opinion on things so i can only repeat what i've learned but i'm not sure i mean not, when i say not sure i i don't know if i think that if i think anything but you, about you what about when it comes to therapy or i mean even even in psychotherapy in many topics um i i don't have opinion you have so many you have you know what countless number I, I, of opinions in, in psychotherapy i forgot to tell you last week when you said uh, when you were talking about the thing where how how this therapist communicates, right, using certain specific words, and how this therapist a was able to, you know, get this yeah. client to say come out of their shell or whatever it is, those are the those are the moments that I'm talking about where. Almost all of the content that I myth to sandwiches that I talk about, because they're mm -hmm. like my myth to sandwiches, there's maybe like about 20, 20 core ideas that are 20 main big lessons that I've learned throughout my career. And they're just all different variations of that, right? How I learned it is kind of like how, how you learn that is the, that was a moment when you realize is that psychotherapy is not just one thing like understanding 
you know, trauma, understanding all of this mm -hmm. personality, blah, 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 like the technical stuff. It's also this, there's this other whole another level to psychotherapy, which is the ability to read people and communicate. Yeah. Do you understand what I mean? Yeah. And that is a lesson that you've learned that a lot of psychotherapists don't know, don't even know, or they don't know that they know. I think subconsciously mm -hmm. they know. Like when they see a, like a brilliant psychotherapist, they're like, "Oh my gosh, so good! How are they doing that?" But the re what they don't know is like what what we just said, right? Like if you can somehow articulate that, right? That a a, a really good psychotherapist does this. Mm-hmm. And then say it, then I, then that's one of those things that, that are, that's gonna make people go like people that are psychotherapists, they're gonna be like, Oh, that's so true. I never thought of it that way. Like, do you understand what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. The goal is to find a lot of moments like that. Mm-hmm find the moments where actually this is the that next level of psychotherapy yeah the thing that the thing that the old yelena didn't know mm -hmm. that you know now and this is one of those things like maybe the the lesson is something like most people think that therapy is all about listening and mm -hmm. asking questions and listening but it's, it's really about how to communicate those questions with the right words and the right intonations based on reading that person's current situation. That's going to make that breakthrough, right? Because it's a psychotherapy really is about making a breakthrough for the client. Yeah. I was thinking after that uh conversation i was thinking is then a psychotherapy and acting because yeah kind of i i think so and and, mm -hmm. and you you might even say this is acting really acting because like here's a good example right like there are times when i'm when i'm talking to you and i don't know if you you're doing this on purpose or are you just naturally doing that but i'll be saying something mm -hmm. and all of a sudden like you get really excited and you're like oh yeah tell me more right like that kind of <laughs> and i can i can see it right i can see the see that you really want me to keep going right and that gets me in return excited and i want to share more right and 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 that's like a good example of like being able to read somebody and like, let's say a client is saying all these things to his dad, right? Mm -hmm. Like, it's like, dad, I hate you. Oh, well, like you're trying to get them to come out of their shell. Right. And then you see, you see a little glimpse of him trying to come, come out at that moment. If you did that, you're like, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and he was like, <laughs> you really look excited and you really want to, right. That might get them to, that might give them the cue to be like, oh, I'm doing something good. Uh, you know what I mean? Yeah. Mm. So that's a example of how. I mean, this I, is, I think yeah, I, I think this is connected to curiosity because I guess my mind wants to put some, wants to understand how, how things function. And if something like, I didn't get it or I need more like what or if my client is sharing something that is like this and that happened like oh wow so then they are kind of just saying in one sentence mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But I don't I don't get a context like but what happened right before like what their response yeah. like all of that they said that yeah yeah they say that and then it's kind of yeah. you open a, a discussion because um just because of curiosity to... and because you, yeah when you're genuinely curious about something i think your client can feel it mm -hmm. 
and obviously like you know when somebody's that curious and they're genuinely interested in what you have to say it's gonna get them to keep going right yeah. and that, that's why oprah you know when you watch oprah like the reason why oprah and barbara walters was such a great interviewer is because they're genuinely interested in what the person they're interviewing has to say so you can see oprah going like 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 when, when they say something in- interesting she'll be like oh. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, and that gets them going even more, right? And yeah. like that happens in sale too. When you're, when I'm genuinely interested in what the client has to say, they they'll keep going, right? And that's how you make breakthrough. And most psychotherapists are like this, right? They're not really genuinely interested. They're like, when you go to the doctor's office, oh yeah, so yeah, go, keep going, <laughs> like. <laughs> If I was a client at a therapist's office like that, I'm like, eh. like it's almost like I'm forcing myself to, like, this mm-hmm. person doesn't really want to hear me. It's just, it's I'm I'm just a, a case number to them, <laughs> and you know what I mean? Yeah. yeah, I literally got confused when my doctor, I changed my doctor, and she was she asked me like what's the problem and i started explaining in like short version because i was prepared that i have like 20 seconds to say Mm -hmm. um she was just looking at me and listening and i got confused it was so so strange like what this woman was yeah yeah i I expected for her to cut me off and just say something Mm, so so i actually think that that's I mean, do you believe that that's what a great therapist are supposed to do? Is to yes. Yes. break them out of their shell and make that breakthrough. And then that, there you go. That's like a, see, I feel like that's one of those rare lessons that a lot of therapists don't talk about. To be genuinely curious. Yeah. But also because when you're genuinely curious, you, mm-hmm. That person is going to react that way. And that's how you're going to make a breakthrough. Yeah. I mean, I, I don't know exactly how that would be put into a carousel yet. Yeah. But like I said, most of the lesson that I learned. Right now, what we have is like we have a seed of an idea there. We we know what this feels like. I, I You know what you're trying to say and you know what that feels like. Now you need to keep saying this over and over with therapists. Next time you you meet with your therapist group, (laughs) a group of therapists, you're like, hey, what do you think about this? Like, and you you talk about it and they're going to add to it. And you you talk about it in your small group and you do it over and over. And you do that after a while, it's going to turn into this marble of uh, something that you can write in 10 sentences. That's like, Mm -hmm. "Mm." (laughs) Do you understand what I mean? Yeah. Um, so I'm still stuck in this. Uh, what I so one thing that I thought of was um, is then psychotherapy acting because if you say someone you you adjust your voice to the client, but then I'm imagining reading something from a client's perspective and then maybe it looks like it will make more harm than good because how can you trust someone that you know that they are acting? Yeah, that's why I don't think it's acting. I think yeah. that you need genuine curiosity. Then I was thinking about... um like everything is when i say manipulation in terms of like manipulating things so you need to if you have if you have a a baby and you need to put that in a crib you need to manipulate your muscles in a way that you do it gently that you don't hurt the baby Mm -hmm. so is that acting no that is adjusting to the circumstances because you care for another person. Yeah. So, so now you're talking about the next 
step like if you say hey it's like acting mm -hmm. um then people are going to be like nah but that's insincere blah, blah, blah. <laughs> then your answer to that would be well everything we do is acting yeah. I mean, do you do you talk the same way to your mom as you to to your boss <laughs> do you talk the same way to your mom as you would do to a five-year-old child <laughs> are you <Yeah>. acting <laughs> <laughs> no, like uh, then everything is acting, right? So, like when you of... dress up to go to work, you're you're putting on a costume, and you're putting on a uh, you're acting. <laughs> yeah. So, I mean that's that's kind of a, a a different lesson, though. I think this the first lesson to me sounds more like what makes a good inner good good therapist for a good therapist versus a great therapist in my opinion it's like what makes an average interviewer versus barbara walters mm -hmm. do you understand what i mean like because if you watch barb and I, maybe you have to think of somebody else like somebody else that most people really know well like I, I love Barbara Walters when she does the interviews, the 60 Minutes back then, because I knew that if Barbara Walters doing a 60 Minutes interview, that that's going to be a good interview. That 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 person is going to spill some shit that they never they would never say anywhere else. <laughs> like all because you know celebrities are very media trained and they're they don't say mm -hmm. anything right. Like they they're very strict about what they say and don't say. But for some reason, when they get get in front of Barbara Walters, all of that shit comes. Barbara Walter has the magical ability to get all of that deep <laughs> innermost feelings out of that person. And that's why so many people cry when they go on Barbara Walters. Like, even if the ones they say, oh, I'm not going to cry, they go on it and they end up crying. And it's because she knows how to break through to that and get it out, right? And I think that's what a great therapist does. I mean, from what it sounds like, what you, I don't know. <laughs> That's why when you told me that last week, I, it, 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 it's the one thing that really stuck with me. Because what you were telling me sounded a lot like what Barbara Walters does. Somehow, mm -hmm. she's able to, um, all of her questions are very deliberate. She asks the questions in a certain order to make sure, like, the beginning part of the interview is always questions that's going to try to get them comfortable. Oh, yeah. Oh, non-threatening. Oh, oh, this is a safe place. And then it gets and then it gets to here and then it gets emotional and she, she makes sure to hit a certain things. <laughs> and then like ends with a bang, right? And then like the, the breakthrough comes. And it's like a, it's like watching a it's like watching like a maestro conduct an orchestra. It's like a, it's so beautiful, like the way she, you know, conducts her interview. And that's what it felt like to me when you said that last week. Yeah. Yeah, there is something to it. How much you will talk? What will you talk? Will you suggest more, or you, or you will be, you will be more quiet, or you will ask more? So, for example, many times when people come first time to a first session, they are nervous, and if I sense that, then I talk more to say like, okay, so let me tell you a little bit about what I do. And then I describe ego states and it's kind of funny because you notice yourself, you notice your parent ego state, your child ego state. Mm -hmm. And then they're going, oh, okay, I notice. And then they slowly um, open up. This sounds like my mother or something like that. So then we are, <laughs> we opened something. So, but sometimes. So you're we, being vulnerable first. That you, it's one of one of the things that I do in my sales meetings is I I I try to be vulnerable first. Mm -hmm. So like I'll I'll talk about like uh 
like if they ask me about some award right i'll tell them an embarrassing story behind there <laughs> or like to make myself more human to them mm-hmm. not like oh because when a client first comes in, it's like oh it's agency me <laughs> professional relationship things yeah. like that to break yeah. that i have to first like sometimes i'll talk about like um like how we've you know I'll tell the story of like how we started Night Owl and then I'll tell them like, I'll tell them my story about like, we had, we had trouble get going through cash flow. So, you know, that the story that I always tell and then like, I had to lie to my clients <laughs> and then one day like he called me out <laughs> like that story. Like that story is such a vulnerable story to tell to, to a new client. But once I start off with that, like now the wall is down and they're, yeah they feel free to tell me their problems and once they're really telling once they've told me their real problems about their business it's almost like the sale is done there because if i'm hiring somebody to make my website the person that's going to do the best job is the one who knows all of my flaws Mm -hmm. (laughs) like if this agency thinks i'm perfect (laughs) most likely they're not going to be able to help me solve my problems right like But just the fact that this person already knows my problems already feels like, oh, and usually what happens is they'll tell me their problems like, oh, I think our WordPress is like, is like hacked or I think we have this bug or blah, blah, blah. Like they'll tell me their embarrassing problem. I'm like, we've seen that all the time. We can take care of it. (laughs) Then that person is like, oh, okay, I feel safe now. I can trust. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So you will... So you would kind of, um, they would um, put down their guard. So, yeah. Um, but I, probably you would not say that to a worried client that is to coming what? to a worried. They are, if you have a client that is like worried and they don't know if, if I don't know, you will. Oh, every client is worried. Yeah. See, every client has something that they're worried about. Every business owner has something that they're worried about. Some skeletons in the closet. Yeah, yeah, worried about about their stuff, but not worried about if you're capable of doing that. Oh, okay, yeah. Well, I guess we're at the point where we've proven ourselves enough. Yeah, so now you you, their trust. But if and I was a beginner <laughs> with no track I record, not say I didn't have cash flow, you know. Yeah. I'm now. If, if I'm like working out of my mom's garage, <laughs> yeah. that, that would be a different story, right? <laughs> this is well. This is also adjusting your narrative to the other person's uh, emotional uh, state and how they see you. Yeah, but though the, the, it's not acting because. Yeah. How I learned this, yeah. The way I learned this, it it naturally happened one time. And then once it happened, I was like, oh, that's interesting. Like Mm -hmm. that really helped them open their gut and they actually really liked that. And then I tried it again. (laughs) And then it it turned out after a while, I'm like, oh, every client has this problem. (laughs) So it just become that part of my natural sales process. It wasn't like manipulative or anything like that. Yeah, I, I know that it's not. You naturally want to bond, want to build trust. So sometimes you will do that by sharing something, sometimes by not sharing something. Yeah, This is yeah. also what, what is happening in psychotherapy. If um, you have, if I have a client that is people pleaser and uh, they find themselves always doing something for other person probably i would um if i have some problem and if i if this is something that i am fine to share to self disclose probably i wouldn't do that because then it will be ar- about me and they will jump to help me or if i would share that i would test to see what will happen and then to reflect on what happened to them when I shared it. 
did I have yeah. the urge to help me, even though I didn't ask. So, so this is just like how, how we naturally do it because you feel, you, you feel something is like, it doesn't work. It doesn't click. So I think it, it, it that naturally happens if you're genuinely interested in the client. Mm -hmm. But I feel like a lot of people, I, mean, I don't know about therapists, but like in this, when I see people do sales, it's clearly like most doctors where it's just another sales meeting to them. It's, it's just like another job. I will definitely you know do I mean? a research. I want to, to make sure that this is really the case. Because... Yeah. And that's why I, I think, um, one of the things that might really help you, which it helped me because in the beginning I was working in silo, kind of like you. Like I didn't see what other freelancers were doing, especially like this is before social media. When I started, this is before the days of social media. So I kind of worked in a silo. I didn't know what other agencies were doing. I didn't know what other, like when I started Night Owl, I went and got proposals for everyone and things like that. But before that, when I was freelancing, I didn't know. But then when I started seeing what other people were doing, that's when, when like a, some of the real confidence came for me. So. I have a mm -hmm. feeling that if you see, if you're aware of what other people are doing and you see what they're doing wrong <laughs> and you're like, oh, I would have done in this situation, I would have done this <laughs> or like you start to see those kind of things. Number one, I think it's going to give you more confidence that maybe what you're the way you're doing it might not be the like the typical way, but it's actually better. Mm -hmm. And also, I think it'll give you confidence to, like, you know, sell yourself, promote yourself more, and maybe more put out more content, maybe put out advice that, you know, you, you think right now are not good advice, but it actually is. Yeah. Yeah, when I watched Sirut Chavla, mm -hmm. um, many... I saw her on Impact Theory this week i i think uh, i sent it to you really yeah, no. yeah no, he was, she was on impact theory with tom billy oh i'm watching that right now um you mean um uh, yeah i don't i don't i don't think i, I think i sent you one of her posts Chris, Chris the one billy? about pop psycho was was he oh maybe Oh, yeah, 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 Chris Williams. Yeah. I don't know why I thought she was an impact theory. Okay. Um, so, so she's her, I mean, she's not saying anything spectacular. She's just saying, listen, like, let's not cuddle people. Like, let's deal with your own shit. And this is it. So own your part of, of responsibility in the equation. So nothing spectacular. She's really kind person, but this, this really sounds like she's saying something revolutionary and, uh, she gets quite some, not hateful comments, but a lot of, um, yeah, I can imagine. <laughs> Like people disagreeing with her. Yeah. 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 So, so she's pointing out some really good points. Like we, we get offended because somebody has different opinion, which is like, nobody did anything to you. They just said different opinion from yours. That's it. That, I think that's just very, very natural on social media is that when you say, that's what I noticed too. Whenever I say something about taking personal responsibility <laughs> mm -hmm. like the other day i i even i just posted something about on threads and twitter something about um you know if you ever order something on amazon right mm -hmm. and then let's say you got the product and it's a box and in the packaging there's like a clear typo a spelling mistake 
like how would you how does that make you feel about the brand right like like for me immediately i'll be like oh this is not really a legit brand <laughs> like legit <laughs> companies like apple or samsung would never <laughs> have spelling mistake on their box right like it would immediately and then i would even question like can i even trust this product <laughs> Like if that this is how they're doing the packaging, right? Like all of those things. And I said, that's how your clients feel when you send them work with a spelling mistake, right? And then I'm like, oh, to me, that's a, that's not even that controversial. I'm like, if I'm a client, and that's kind of, from my experience, that's how it was. When a client paying us $50,000 for, for a website and we would send them a design with a typo in it, like, or we send them a website that has spelling mistake. The client's not going like, what am I paying you for? Like, for me to proofread your work? Like, that's how they feel. Do you know what I mean? And, and I'm, I feel like that too. When I, when I give a list of 20 things to my employee and it comes back and like two of them are not done and I have to give it to them again and I have to double check all of their work. I feel like I'm, why, why do I need to babysit you? That's how I feel. Do you know what I mean? Especially if like you're paying a lot of money. And I even said like that's the difference between somebody who charges five hundred dollars for a website versus fifty thousand dollars for a website. <laughs> okay. Like clients don't, ex don't clients don't expect to babysit you when they're paying you fifty thousand dollars for a website. Oh my gosh, people started disagreeing and I'm like, really? This is not even that con like to me, it's it's a pretty obvious thing. But somebody said, Oh, you're creating worker anxiety. People are already anxious about uh, being at work, about making mistakes, and you're creating more worker anxiety. I'm like, well, <laughs> if that person gets fired, it's their own fault. It's <laughs> that the the market doesn't care about your emotions. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Uh, the I guess the difference is. Because everybody makes like typos and it's so common that that we kind of ad adapted to that. Or many times when I make a typo, I see that there's a typo, but I'm like, nah, they will get it. <laughs> so I just yeah. send it. So I guess, I guess some. To me, I guess it's kind of yeah. like, um, Let's say, let's say you're working with, um, let, let's say you have a babysitter, you don't have a baby, but <laughs> let's say you have a baby and you have a babysitter and this mm -hmm. baby, this babysitter is like, um, like never answer your phone and like always like returns your phone call like a day later. Would you trust that person to babysit your kid? Like what if an emergency happens and you, you have to call, like, do you know what I mean? Like you ever yeah. heard that Buddhist term, like how you do it? Anything is how you do everything. No, but I will write it down. Like people that you tend to be sloppy in one thing. I'm going to expect them to be sloppy in the work they do too. And I, and this, this is actually, you know what? When I was reading through those comments, the, what, what I, <laughs> what I thought was, I'm like, no wonder you guys are not fucking successful. Like, that's the mentality of a low page worker. <laughs> like, that's the mentality of somebody who does freelance on Fiverr. That's the mentality of somebody like a, a low wage worker. Like, somebody that's playing at this level, they don't think like that. They they double check their work. They proofread. They you know what I mean. They go through everything, double check, and make sure everything is in good order before they send it out. Do they miss make mistakes? Yes, they do. But they when don't I make obvious. Yeah. Yeah, when I think about Novak Djokovic and so many times I've heard him giving interviews because he plays some play tennis in different continent or country um, and he's giving interview after that in Chinese for example or in Japanese so he, he and he has fluent speech so you kind of you think like he knows what he's really? speaking about yes I didn't know. So, <laughs> yeah, many times in, in many different languages, like like after a match or um, it's kind but of... But he thing. learned that for this or he already... Yeah, knew how to speak. He learned it 
I think he learned that by heart, you know. Oh, so, okay. Because he answered this question so many times. No, he. It's you know when in the end of a match, then you kind of take a mic and say like, "I want to thank to sponsors, oh, okay, okay. Thank to my wife and my kids, and thank everybody, my family, la la la." So this is like three sentence. But the fact that many people uh, are not even trying to do it, and he's trying, and yeah, he actually puts exactly. some time to learn every sen- every single word, shows so much about his work ethic, even if it's something so stupid, like three mm-hmm. sentences you don't even need to do. But he wants that mm-hmm. to be yeah. on point. And, and that's, see? This is how you get referrals. <laughs> this is how you get repeat customers, right? <laughs> like, so I imagine mean, imagine you now a dog which needs to babysit your child. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah, exactly. Everything, have everything. Are there. you doing anything? Is yeah, exactly. <laughs> so, but but I, I mean, that was my point. But just the amount of when I see comments on threads, especially. What I notice is that people are very fragile. They're very mm-hmm. they 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 want the world to fix all the problems. It's never their fault. And whenever yeah. I I do something where, you know, <laughs> like if like if what I say offends you, that's not my like that's it's not my job to not offend you. Like whenever I say anything about them taking personal responsibility, people hate that. And like it's, it really mm-hmm. tells it. It shows a lot about society these days, huh? like how people are. We live in a very <laughs> entitled society where everybody is very fragile, and and you know. Yeah, well, it looks like whole Instagram or like majority of content on Instagram is like a typo. It's literally a typo because yeah, people yeah, yeah. are just posting something for the sake of posting. And many times I see, I mean, I'm watching mostly psychotherapy profiles and this is where I'm, what I'm judging. So I sense that kind of fake moment where everything is too fluffy and uh, I don't know, kind of. Nobody's fixing yeah. anything. We're all talking about this. It's like a, you know, when you are, um, it's like a gossiping or like when you read some a romantic novel and then you want to share to your friend, like what was in that novel. So this is <laughs> this is actually Instagram. So people are sharing like what is secretary <laughs> about, and that's it. This is where it starts and where it ends. So. I actually think social media should be like that so like social media email like text messages i would give people a lot more slack right if there's typos or something like that there Mm -hmm. but it's like when you send out a proposal for example or when you send out a design to a client like Mm -hmm. i make sure at least the basics are all in check right because like imagine you're a client and you, you receive a draft and there's like very obvious clear mistakes in it it's just like it's hard for me to trust that <laughs> designer from that point on. You know what I mean? And like even like in our you know when when we started sending out, I told you I I shopped around at all the other agencies, and I saw that they just send out this like PowerPoint or PDF proposal email to their client. So what we started doing is we would print out. So we ordered these like uh, boxes from China. This nice black each. Each box was like $5. It cost us like a lot of money to get these boxes printed wow. with like a gold plated uh, Night Owls logo. And and you open it and inside there we, we had a Night Owls t-shirt with like a Night Owls playing card. And then we put the proposal there. And we, we it, it was like in a nice gift box. We wrapped it and then we overnight FedExed it to the client. And that was our proposal. Like, so imagine you're a client and you just oh interview my. five different agencies. And... Four agencies just email you a PDF proposal and you get this FedEx box <laughs> like the next day. Like, who are you going to go with? Do you know what I mean? <laughs> like, you have never mentioned like this. Them. 
This is the first time I'm sharing this. Uh, I, I've, I've said it before, not in a while, but but it's it's I like those attention to details that's like I think it's it's like um just seeing things from the other person's perspective because once you do, and that's mm-hmm. that's it's one of the main reasons why I told you to go shop around with those other therapists because I think it'll be very clear how you can differentiate yourself mm-hmm. from them. Yeah. I will do that. Okay. I think we had a good good conversation. Yeah. <laughs> and it's getting late there. Okay. So Let's we'll continue next week. Thank you for your time. Thank you Thanks for your, for your time. good advice <laughs> about my level one, two, three. I'll see you next week and I'll see you all next, next week. week. Bye. Bye. Sweet.